What if humans lived right after the extinction of the dinosaurs? We all know that mammals only had the chance to thrive after the dinosaurs disappeared. Before that, they remained in their shadow and didn't even consider competing for the top of the food chain. On our channel, we've often discussed how humans might survive during different periods of Earth's history. Today, we'll imagine what life would have been like for humans immediately following the end of the age of dinosaurs and whether they could have survived during that time. To understand how humans might have felt right after the extinction of the dinosaurs, we need to establish the living conditions of that era. It's important to clarify that we won't be debating whether humans could have evolved during that time. The answer is clear. No, they could not. The conditions for the emergence of the first primates only developed on Earth several tens of millions of years later. In our scenario, humans inexplicably appear at the end of the Cretaceous period, and we will simply explore all aspects of their potential existence during that time. By the end of the age of dinosaurs, the climatic conditions on Earth were quite suitable for human life. The geography of that time was dominated by a single supercontinent, Gondwana, which was almost entirely covered by tropical jungles. Consequently, the climate was hot and humid. Many species currently inhabit similar environments in South America, Africa, and Southeast Asia. Such a climate could be considered quite livable. However, we must remember that one of the main reasons for the dinosaurs' extinction is believed to be a prolonged nuclear winter triggered by the impact of a massive asteroid. This event unleashed a catastrophic shockwave and tsunamis reaching heights of up to 100 meters across the planet. Volcanic activity intensified, leading to numerous earthquakes. A vast amount of dust and volcanic ash was thrust into the atmosphere, effectively blocking sunlight from reaching the Earth's surface. This resulted in a severe cooling and the disappearance of most plants and animals on the planet. In such climatic conditions, only small forms of life managed to survive. The largest mammal of that period weighed no more than one pound. Let's assume our hypothetical time travelers missed all these cataclysms and arrived on a relatively calm planet during the height of the nuclear winter. We can also presume that they had already learned to create fire, build warm shelters, and make necessary clothing. Now, let's try to understand what they would have had to eat. The first 100,000 years after the massive meteorite impact saw our planet inhabited by the most primitive forms of animal and plant life. It's important to remember that true trees did not exist at that time. The tropical jungles that covered the Earth at the end of the Cretaceous period were primarily made up of enormous ferns. While it might have been possible to build shelters and start fires using their trunks and branches, it would take several hundred thousand years before fruit-bearing trees appeared. It's unlikely that humans could have survived on fern leaves alone. Additionally, it's quite challenging to imagine that humans could rely on hunting for survival. As mentioned earlier, the surviving mammals and birds were extremely small. For any sizable group of people to survive, hunting them would have needed to be done on an industrial scale, which seems rather unfeasible in the harsh conditions of constant cold, darkness, and smoky air. It's worth noting that the extinction event did not have a severe an impact on aquatic life. Many species of fish, along with crocodiles and turtles, survived. Perhaps if humans lived near water sources, they might have had a chance to gather some food. However, crafting warm clothing from fish scales or turtle shells would have been quite a challenge. After the mass extinction, nature quickly began to restore both the quantity and quality of life on Earth. Within the first 100,000 years of the ensuing Cenozoic era, the diversity of species had already become comparable to that at the end of the age of dinosaurs. The climate was changing, the nuclear winter gradually receded, and the first palm trees began to appear. Mammals grew to the size of modern raccoons or small dogs, weighing around 6 kilograms. This development was likely due to the emergence of nut-bearing plants. If humans had appeared during this time, their chances of survival and development would have been significantly higher than at the beginning of the era. 700,000 years after the dinosaurs vanished, another evolutionary leap occurred in the planet's flora with the arrival of the first legumes. This allowed animals to feed more efficiently. By this time, mammals averaged about 50 kilograms in weight, opening up the possibility of agriculture for humans. Many primitive human civilizations, such as those of the indigenous peoples of South America, effectively assimilated legume crops and were able to establish some of the first state formations in their regions. 
Scientists believe that the complete recovery of the planet from the effects of the meteorite impact that wiped out the dinosaurs took roughly 1 million years. Mammals only reached sizes comparable to modern horses or bison about 10 million years after the giant reptiles disappeared, which was approximately 56 million years ago. Throughout this time, climatic changes and the separation of continents continued. It seems that if the first modern humans had emerged during this period, their development could have followed a path similar to that of real evolutionary history. The Earth was no longer just a mass of jungles. The forests were composed of quite modern trees, and many animal species could have made worthy targets for hunting or become domesticated livestock. Let's imagine which creatures from the early Cenozoic era could have been utilized by humans. Androsarchus one of the main dangers for humans living in the early Cenozoic would have been the Androsarchus. These hoofed mammals, weighing up to a ton, were the largest carnivorous mammals to ever roam the planet. They resembled dogs or wolves more than the relatives of modern domestic pigs. While it is known that the first domesticated animal was the dog, why couldn't this giant, or one of its smaller relatives, have served as a hunting companion for humans? Indracotherium. These distant ancestors of modern rhinoceroses were the largest land mammals in the history of life on Earth. They inhabited Asia and were truly gigantic, with scientists estimating their height could reach 6 meters and their body length up to 8 meters, weighing as much as 20 tons. If primitive humans could organize drives to hunt mammoths, they could certainly devise a way to obtain such a massive amount of meat. And if they managed to domesticate them like Indian elephants, they would make a great alternative to trucks, cranes, or tanks, depending on how they were utilized. Hipparion. This extinct animal from the horse family was widespread across the globe, with remains found in Europe, Africa, and North America. Hipparion stood about one and a half meters tall and was not much different from modern horses. While riding it comfortably might have been unlikely, it could have been adapted as a draft animal birds. This period in evolutionary history could very well be called the age of birds. After the dinosaurs vanished, a large number of large flightless birds emerged, which were carnivorous and successfully hunted small ungulates and rodents. A notable example of such creatures was the forest rakos, while its smaller relatives could have served as the prototypes for domestic chickens. At the same time, many large predatory birds appeared. They were true giants, like the Argentavis, which had a wingspan of 7 meters and weighed 70 kilograms. From the above, it's clear that the chances of human survival immediately after the extinction of the dinosaurs were extremely low. However, with each subsequent million years, the conditions on the planet became increasingly hospitable for modern humans. If they had appeared not 200,000 years ago, but 50 million years earlier, they might have comfortably adapted to the realities of that time. We thank the viewers who watched this video until the end. If you're interested in scientific hypotheses about life conditions on Earth during different geological periods, we recommend subscribing to our channel so you don't miss anything.